Um, thank you for joining our architecture panel today. My name is Chloe, um, and I'm really excited to be moderating the panel. For the students who might be joining a Millie event for the first time, uh, Millie is a, basically a company dedicated to building a global community for international students from all around the world. Um, and that's basically why we host our panels and webinars every weekend. And um, we always do tons of different topics. So if you're ever interested in any future events, um, you can look at our Instagram or LinkedIn for other panels we host. Um, so here's how today's panel will look. We have some questions prepared already to go over, but um, for the students, there's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. If you wanna submit any questions there, feel free. Um, and we will definitely go over those in the last probably five to 10 minutes of the panel. Um, and the question can be general to everybody, or if you'd like to ask a specific person, that's totally fine. Just make sure you put their name in the question so I know who to direct it to. Um, all right, so we are good to get started. So if all of the panelists maybe want to give us a quick introduction, you know, your name, the school you're at, um, yeah, just anything you'd like to share. Um, go ahead, Irene, I'll let you start us off. Uh, so uh, my name is Irene and I am an architecture student at the University of Bath. I'm in second year and going to be in third year starting in October. And just a fun fact about myself is recently I've started, well, no, like about five years ago, I started collecting every, like each country I traveled to, I tried to get like a doll from there. So I have like a lot of stuffed animals now from each country that I visited. So yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Arnav. Uh, I'm going into my fourth and final year uh, at the University of Bath studying architecture. Um, I'm from Thailand. And fun fact about myself, um, I, I do music on the side, I guess. I play a bunch of instruments. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Hi, I'm Dalia. I'm an architecture graduate from the University of Salford. Um, I've just graduated like a week ago with first class honors. So it's a very exciting uh, chapter of my life. Uh, fun fact about me is I like swimming and basketball. Um, I consider these like my hobbies. Um, and yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, I'm so happy that you all could be here today. Um, so we will get into some of the questions now. So. Um, first of all, we'll just start off with a bit of a background, a baseline. Um, so did you guys always know that you wanted a degree in architecture? And if not, what sort of pushed you in that direction or, you know, put the idea in your head, maybe? Uh, so for me in school, I always enjoyed my art classes. So I did visual arts and art and design during my high school. And for me, I knew I always wanted to get into a career that was kind of creative. So at the time, I didn't really know if that was going to be like interior design or if it was going to be architecture or maybe illustration. So, yeah, that was kind of I, already, I knew I wanted to do something creative in that field. And then architecture came after during like my final years when I started working on things like doing physics and a lot more math. So, yeah, I enjoyed that quite a lot. Yeah, honestly, for me, it's pretty much identical to Irene. I, I did. I just enjoyed art so much in school, but I didn't want to do just art uh, at university. I kind of wanted to do something a little bit more uh, like engineering based. Um, so I thought a Bachelor of Science in Architecture would be sort of like the perfect thing um, for that. But it was also a, a more of like a, st like a financial stability option, I think, than just doing like, you know, an arts. It, it, there's, it's, there's quite, it's like a very, like a stable sort of like route you can go through by doing architecture, I think. I think in my case, I also agree with Irene and Arnav, but I was very reluctant at some point in my life. Um, growing up, like ever since I was like 10, 11, um, I knew for a fact, like I wanted something very like creative, art-based and just something like where I can like showcase all of my artistic like dexterity and um, things like such. But then I reached um, like a certain point in my life where I was like, oh, should I do architecture? Should I go into medicine? Um, it was very like two different things, but I feel like I just went with my gut and I knew like I love artistic um, aspects. And so I chose visual arts and physics and like maths and 
I literally just delved into it. And I feel like, yeah, it was honestly, yeah, the best decision I made because uh, I've graduated and I feel like it kind of suits my personality, suits the things I enjoy in life. And I'm only going to get more creative from this point onwards. Thanks, guys. Um, so kind of on the other side of that, I guess, how did you choose the specific school um, that you ended up at to do your degree? Um, Irene, go ahead. Um, well, one of the things that was important for me was uh, being able to be in a relatively smaller city. So I knew I didn't I wouldn't like to go somewhere like London or Bristol just because I always preferred living in smaller areas but still being having being able to have access to cities like that so a lot of my options were based on like picking unis like in Bath maybe Sheffield that's a bit bigger but still not quite busy so it was either up really up north or quite south <laughs> so that was the way I kind of based it on and then also what was important for me was the placement aspect during my course because I really wanted to get experience during my university time so I would be able to know if I really wanted to kind of delve more into the career. So especially the reason I chose Bath specifically is because we do have the integrated placement within my degree, whereas in Sheffield, you have to do your placement after you've graduated. So, yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah I mean, I have a feeling that I'm going to have a lot of the same answers as Irene here because we go to the same uni, but. Um, yeah, the placement thing for me was was a huge, huge deal as well, because, you you know, you get to go and work and then come back to uni and then go work again and come back to uni. And so you get to just sort of use all the skills that you get in practice and then bring it back and then in, like include it in all your personal projects that you do. Um, but it was also um, bad for me was it seemed like a very like technical and science-based university when it comes to architecture it's not so much about uh like the concept or like the artistic um like aspects of architecture it's way more like grounded uh in in, in like the science like areas yeah i think for me it was a matter of having a diversity um i wanted the location of like my um, university to be like strategic in a way where I can actually help like basically find people that are similar to me um, a community that's diverse and has like things to do because I don't live here in the UK so I came from um, abroad and um, so I didn't want my university experience to be kind of affected by the area that I was living in so I figured Manchester would be like a great place to live in um, a couple of my friends have also like been here before um, and so there I've heard so many good things about it um, secondly was um, the course I didn't want something to be very much engineering based I've researched um, various other universities and realized that like for example the University of Sheffield um, the architecture course is very much like very engineering based so um, it's more like civil engineering than actually like art and um, things like such. And so I feel like with our university, it was more art based creativity, like why is you would basically learn a lot. And um, that's basically the, the most important aspect for me uh, when I was choosing my university path. Uh, thanks guys. I think those were really good answers. Um, so next we'll sort of move to some more questions focused around your high school experience and how that maybe impacted your university experience. Um, so did you guys do any um, specific classes in high school that were, I know a couple of you mentioned art, so maybe something like that that was really beneficial towards your degree when you're applying, for example. Um, and then also on that other side, maybe internships as well, if you happen to do anything like that in high school. Um, so yeah, uh, like visual arts was definitely helpful because that on, works on your drawing skills, but also how you present your ideas on paper. So for other people to understand, so that was very useful for me. And But another big thing that I didn't realize would have helped as much as I thought it would was taking photography because that was being able to capture aspects of like the buildings and stuff is quite important when you're trying to show people why your building stands out. So taking that 
photography classes after school, learning techniques was just very helpful. And even you're taking views on like softwares on Revit or Enscape, it's just quite nice being able to capture moments and being able to understand the way lighting affects spaces and how, you know, being able to kind of feel the aura of a space, if that makes sense. So yeah, taking classes like that was helpful. And then I think just in your 10, just did work experience like many schools do and I went to an architecture firm so it was quite nice being able to see what it's actually like in practice and that really helped me kind of decide what subjects I would kind of steer more into before I did like my I like international baccalaureate because so that's what I did yeah yeah I definitely agree on the the visual arts and the photography aspect of that because yeah the way you present your visuals is definitely like really important to how uh, like whoever's grading your work is going to perceive it. Um, but yeah, I think visual arts is definitely important in terms of just learning how to sketch um, because like just communicating even like the tiniest of sketches is like super important for like your process um, when you're doing like a design project. Um, but I also feel like physics was extremely useful for just understanding how uh, like a building works when you come to uni. I feel like you can grasp a lot of like the scales of it. Like I didn't even know like how long, like like 10 meters was, you know, like before I took like physics. Like you, you don't really know like these types of scales before you take it, but then I feel like it, it, it teaches you a lot of that stuff. Um, I didn't do an internship myself before um, uh, coming into study architecture, but I wish I did because they can really teach you all about the software, like the essential software that you need to just like go straight into it. So you don't have to, you know, waste any time learning it while you're in school because, you know, school is already hard enough. Um, but yeah. Um, I agree with um, Irene as well on this uh, very much because uh, I believe she did the International Baccalaureate as well, which I was going to mention now. Um, so basically, I chose the visual arts route as well. Um, and I feel like by doing that, we had to basically create various projects. And each project, we focused on something else. And so some of it was like photography based, some of it was editing based, some of it was like painting, like hand drawings, all of that. And so I feel like by getting exposed to that many like mediums and um, it made me more creative and at the same time it I feel like prepared me for the first year of um, university because uh, during first year our like program was very much like hand-based like everything was done using like hand drawings and like um, sketching and even our elevation sections plans everything um, whereas I feel like now people well, in our uni, like kind of diverted a little bit to more like digital based stuff. Um, but I feel like because you, you school prepared us for that, it was very like, it was a nice transition. We were, we just fit in right away. And it was just a matter of like learning the technical skills and um, things like such. Um, I, enough mentioned the physics aspect of it as well. We had a subject called principles of sustainable architecture and, um, another one related to physics basically as well and I feel like through the school um, I was like okay this is very familiar like it's things that we kind of already were introduced to it before getting into uni and um, I honestly wish like enough said I did an internship on architectural stuff mainly I have done an internship uh, for something else sales and marketing team but I feel like it's a very different experience doing something related to architecture. It kind of prepares you even like more and more. Um, but yeah, during school, because we were the visual arts students, we kind of had the privilege of designing stuff at our school. So whenever there would be like an event, uh, we kind of took charge and we designed everything like from scratch. And it was just nice to see like, um, things basically coming to life from like just small sketches. And I feel like that's basically the concept of architecture. Thanks guys. Um, so we'll move to some more degree related questions now, um, but maybe if you guys could share what a day in your life as a student kind of is, maybe if there's an average day, um, the type of hours you might be studying, the type of homework or tasks or 
anything like that that gets given to you. Um, yeah, Irene, go ahead. Uh, so average day, I would have about two or three lectures. Each lecture is two hours long, usually a break in between for like 10, 15 minutes. So most lectures start at 9.15, then they just go throughout the day. And in between, we'd spend a lot of time in the studio. So there's always design projects running like throughout the semester as you're doing your lecture. So you get a lot of studio time, get to talk to a lot of people, see what's going on. So yeah, basically 9.15 to like very late in the studio, basically. <laughs> always, but yeah, that's a typical day and how that goes. I mean, yeah, mine's pretty similar. Uh, ex apart from uh, in third year, we didn't have as many lectures at all, maybe like one or two a week. Um, so our typical day was mostly just in the studio working on our studio project because that accounts to the majority of your grade. Um, so we it, it's definitely like long hours in the studio, but I feel like the studio that we have definitely it's like a very supportive environment. You're sort of there with all your friends. It sort of, it sort of just feels like you're hanging out with your friends most of the day while you're doing, you know, the work. Um, so it's just like overall just a nice place to be. So yeah, it, it, honestly, like a typical day for in in third year was just hanging out with my friends, uh, and working with them like the entire day and night. But yeah. I think all architecture students can agree to this. Um, it's basically just a matter of getting some sleep and then waking up, going to lectures, and in between going to the studio. The studio was basically like our second home. Uh, so, if not first actually, but uh, it was just like a nice environment where you kind of just get to learn from each other um, and uh, just have a supportive like group of friends around you. Um, to help you like literally get through everything. Um, and by getting exposed to their work and everybody else's work, you kind of learn a lot as well because you have the opportunity to ask. Um, the tutors were always around the studio as well. Um, so you can always ask for um, advice on your work. And I feel like that just made it like so much easier. So I think um, studio is one of the most important like things a university, you know, should continue to like develop and prosper um, because I feel like it kind of helps us students to design better work even because um, I know most people at home they might not have like a suitable environment for the kind of projects that we have to do so the studio is basically um, going to take most of that yeah uh, thanks guys so um, next question moves more towards the different aspects of your degree. Um, so what would you guys say is the more the most challenging aspect of your degree? Um, that could be a specific module, uh, maybe projects you had to do, um, anything to do with your degree. Um, I think for me, it was one of my modules below. It was called the build building environment module. And so that was just, I think the, it was about kind of trying to integrate sustainable fact, like factors into your design, but you have to do it alongside your designing process. And I think that was a bit difficult, like a hard transition from first year to second year, when first year, it was just all about trying to be creative, not really thinking about environmental impacts as much, but now it was more integrated into the project. And I think I found it quite difficult just doing all these calculations for like lighting, like daylight factors, um, looking at ventilation and stuff like that. So that was quite a difficult module for me, but I think I did learn quite a lot from it. And it did help me kind of realize the importance of um, incorporating your sustainability just straight from the beginning instead of just doing it at the end, because then that way it kind of informs your design as you keep going and just makes it better overall. But, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, uh, aside from the design studio module, which probably takes up most of your time at university, because it's just, there's just so much work you have to produce in like such a short amount of time. Um, I actually found one of my modules in first year, probably the hardest, it was called structures. Um, it was just basically applied physics, um, where you were just calculating like, forces and beams and columns and arches and stuff like that and like I could not 
like wrap my head around it. So I I definitely think like if I maybe done a bit more physics before jumping into that kind of level, it would have benefited me benefited me a lot more. But yeah, other than that, I, I, it's definitely the, the design studio module because it's just very time consuming. Um, I think for me, the transition from first year to second year was maybe the hardest because um, as I've told you guys, it was mainly like hand based. Um, and so second year we were basically using Revit and all of these softwares and it was basically at the peak of lockdown. And so we weren't kind of exposed to the studio environment and um, just learning from each other in that aspect. And um, I feel like using Revit to begin with was like the hardest thing ever. I was like, are we even gonna be able to do this? But eventually you do learn you, um, and there's like so many ways you can learn from. I feel like self teaching yourself the majority of the stuff is actually the way to go anyway because you will make mistakes you will learn from them um and so i think i struggled with that with the design studio subject um but i think beside like um the modules uh i think the most like the hardest thing ever was to kind of balance my life with university i feel like I can speak, I think for most architecture students, it's so hard to kind of find the right balance uh, where you can actually do things in your life and at the same time focus in uni and achieving the grades that you want, especially when you have like a high expectation for yourself or like a standard that you always want to follow. And um, yeah, I think you learn throughout the years to kind of create that balance, but yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, so on the flip side of that, now if you could share um, the your favorite part of the, um, your degree, and again, it can relate to any aspect. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Uh, I think one of my favorite things is just the studio time because we def we didn't have that in first year because that was when COVID hit. So first year was all online. So being able to come back in second year being able to be in a studio space, get to actually see people in person that you're working on projects with was just so much nicer. Being able to like go to like a lecture, a lecturer and just talk to them in person. It's, it feels like you get to know them a lot better and they get to understand your type of work. So having the connections was a really big part for me because um, I just really like speaking to people. You know, you bounce ideas. It's so much easier to do that than on Zoom. People can like sketch over your work. You know, you're sketching over someone else's work. You ask people questions. So that was one of the things I liked a lot. And also just would have like, if we're all like staying out, like really late in the studio, you're not alone in your room doing it by yourself. So you kind of have like a support system where you all order food, you all have like a little break. You're just chatting. So definitely the studio is one of the big things that I really like about it and in third year we get to move to the bigger studio which is like open plan which is quite nice so it's even better than second year so i'm excited no yeah i agree that yeah i was about to say that the studio ivory was talking about is just it's like beautiful it's like the best place to be that's definitely like my favorite part it's just you're in this like massive room with all your friends and you're just, you know, it, it doesn't even feel like you're working because you're sort of just, you have this support system around you, just sort of automatically get to it. And, you know, when it gets too tough, you can just go out for a coffee or get something to eat and then come back and then restart, you know? Um, but yeah, it's just that I just love having a space where like, like it's not just with your friends as well. You also have your own sort of table, your own designated desk where you can come to sort of leave all your stuff and you just leave all your stuff there and you can come and go when you want. And it's just like, it's so much better than just having like, you know, like working in your room all the time. I feel like it, it, it can get quite depressing if you're always in your room. So just having some place to go and it's like yours um, is, yeah, definitely my favorite part. I agree with Irene and Arnav. Um, I had exactly the same thing to say, um, but I think beside that, beside the, the studio environment and having your friends around and everything, I think the most exciting thing is seeing your projects come to life um, because you spend all semester just working on, especially the, the design um, subjects, uh, you work on them, you change your ideas 
technically every single week because uh, the design is never finalized. Um, and so you reach a point where uh, you realize the project is actually getting there. And that's usually towards the last couple of weeks, like before the submission, uh, when you're doing the renders and you're photoshopping everything and adding like the tiny little details that just make your the whole project pop. And um, I think that's one of the most exciting things because um, you realize that all the sleepless nights and all of the sessions where you kind of doubt yourself, they're basically like over now. And it's just the sweet part that's left, which is putting your project together, presenting it in a way that kind of showcases your ideas, your process, and at the same time, your personality. And uh, so just seeing the final thing is one of the most exciting things ever. Thanks, guys. Um, so our next one is, so I know um, Arnav and Irene, you guys have mentioned your placement year a couple times, but I thought maybe we could go a little bit more into that. And you guys can explain like what that involves, what your day to day will look like during that placement year. Um, that sort of thing. And then Dahlia, for you, if you just like to maybe if you did an internship or anything that can kind of relate a little bit, you can share that experience as well. Uh, so the way the course is structured at Bath is, is a, it's a four year course. So you do a f the first year you do it all at uni and then you do half of second year. So you do one semester and then your second semester, you're supposed to be out in placement. And then you come back for semester one in third year, and then you go out again in semester two for third year, and then you do your whole final year back at uni. So the way my placement works at the moment, so I live in Bath, so I commute to Bristol, but sometimes I work from home, which is quite nice. So the office, it's quite flexible. Um, we're able to work from home. We have a lot of, um, there's also a Bath office as well that I can go to sometimes. So I get to meet a lot more people you know, so I'm just not in my room <laughs> doing some work. And um, my day to day is the good thing about the company I'm at. So it's like a it's a people owned company, if that makes sense. So a lot of the people who work there invest into the comp back into the company. So a lot of the shares are owned by the people who work there as well. And the good thing. So then what happened is they changed the way the working day is. So you have you can arrive between the hours of seven and ten, or you can start working between those hours. As long as by the end of the day you've done seven and a half hours of work, so I think it's quite flexible in that sense where you can start at seven if you like. And there's also people who, if you just prefer, you can start at like nine thirty and finish maybe a bit later. So I usually get into the office around nine, and then finish at around five thirty. So it's quite nice. Then have like a very relaxed evening. So during the week, there's always, a, we all, I'm split into different teams. So I'm in the workplace team and we have a meeting every week. So every Monday morning, we have a meeting just to catch up, see what everyone else is doing, kind of assign tasks, what needs to get done quickly, set deadlines. So definitely have to be a lot more precise with things, which is what I learned in practice. Um, but yeah, and then just during the week, always, remembering to catch up and make sure you're doing the work that needs to be done. So, yeah. Yeah, I think Irene pretty much explained how the placements work. So thank you for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, for my my placement in second year, I worked at uh, a company in Thailand uh, for a pretty big company, about 300 to 400 people. I'm um, doing mainly just um, uh, like high end, like office buildings and hotels. Uh, stuff like that. But for third year, I worked in a really, really tiny company of about eight people uh, in London. And London is where I think more than half of all the students in Bath end up going, if I'm not wrong, uh, just because there's like so much work uh, and, and opportunities there. Um, but I really enjoyed my third year placement because the company was super tiny. So you basically have a lot more responsibility and the work you're doing is actually beneficial for like the company you're working a lot you're working a lot on technical design and you know just a lot more of the the share of responsibility gets put onto you because you're know, working at a big company you're basically like lost like you barely know anyone um but yeah that's why I, enjoy, I enjoyed you know working for a smaller company um but yeah it was it was i think at our level it's mainly 
lot of the work we do is mainly like post-processing work. So it's mainly just working on software, uh, you know, developing visual visuals, um, making models, stuff like that. So yeah, it's 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 stuff that's really beneficial for, um, you know, when we come back to uni because you learn so much about like the software you're using and how to produce images and just like how the design process works. Um, but yeah, aside from that, I think it's just really useful to just know how practice works in general, um, like contract law and billing regulations and stuff, just because it's stuff that companies really just, it, it like companies really want to see when, you know, you're applying for your next um, work experience. Yeah. I think for me, I have a very different experience from Irene and Arnav, and I think that all depends on whether you go to a university that does the placement here or not, uh, which now looking back at it, honestly, I admire the university path that they went into as well, because um, it kind of exposes you to that real life aspect of architecture and working for a firm and getting to know people with, within that industry. Um, I think for us, it was more um, academics based, obviously, um, but I'm starting to delve into that now that I've graduated. Um, and I think for us, it was mainly um, joining architecture competitions and uh, having connections with people from the industry to prepare you for when you're basically done with uni. Um, I believe uh, the tutors have provided us with like, um, like a group of individuals that you can always go to and ask for advice for when you um, would like to delve into the industry. And um, I believe many of the projects that we were also working on, um, they were, they helped us a lot to kind of get exposed to um, the, people in the industry because for example we had uh, a multidisciplinary project where we worked with um, quantity surveyors project um, construction project managers um, architectural technicians and it was basically like I felt like I was working <laughs> for a company because the project was like a re renovation refurbishment of like a, an old bank and um, a fire station and so being the lead architecture student uh, in the in the group kind of uh, like it made me feel like this is like a work experience um the way we did it as well like was very much like how people do it in the industry we had to take minutes of every single meeting uh, we had to continuously be in contact with each other we did it throughout COVID as well. Um, and so I feel like that gave me like a, a big insight on um, what it's like to work in the industry. Um, the project that we were working on, in fact, uh, it was nominated for um, like a panel of judges for the CIOB. Uh, so they basically used everything. I was emailed to like for permission to use it and stuff. And um, it was just a very like, exciting experience because we did this uh, in our second year of uni and um, I feel like that's when we kind of got more excited to delve into um, architecture and the industry world. Uh, thank you for those answers guys. So we have one last question um, related to the more academic side and then we'll move to some more career focus. Um, but for our last question, are there any specific characteristics um, that you think someone would need to have to be successful within an architecture degree? Um, maybe it's something that you developed or you noticed in people or anything like that. Um, I think a very big one for me that um, I kind of noticed was just being confident in your work, because like even especially in group projects, I used to be very kind of shy, not really voice out my opinions just because I'm like, oh, no, it's fine. Maybe it's like a bad idea or something. But I think just having the courage to even just say it out loud really helped me a lot, because even if your idea is technically not chosen, people can kind of jump onto that idea and then it keeps developing. So it's kind of just keeping things moving. So being confident in your work and what you're presenting really kind of changed the way I see my work and just it helps me work better and Kind of believe in myself a lot more so that was one of the big things that i learned at uni or even just in practice because obviously like i come in as a part one there's people who are like senior associate architects and it's kind of terrifying but then just being able to say those things in meetings suggesting ideas does really 
um, kind of change the trajectory of projects quite a lot because yeah you you're there to work together and learn and it's okay to like make mistakes during the way and another thing was I learned a lot was just to have fun and be kind of creative like not no idea is really a bad idea per se like especially in terms of form like everything doesn't have to be so structured I kind of it doesn't have to just be like all boxed up. It can be like just different shapes. So I, for me, it was about kind of getting outside of this box of what I thought architecture has to be and kind of trying to put my own kind of twist on it. So just being able to, cause I play Sims quite a lot. <laughs> so just being able to kind of just even play Sims when you're playing Sims, you're just kind of making stuff up and it should you should feel as excited when you're creating projects because that's when you make the biggest impact. Because you know, if you're enjoying the process, then you're going to succeed better. And also just your work is gonna turn out just so much better. So that was a good thing, like a big thing for me, just being more confident and like not being scared to voice out my opinions and just have crazy ideas. So, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I agree. Like the confidence thing is super important because like the design, especially, if for your projects is so subjective and you know when you're presenting maybe the, the tutors just won't understand what you're trying to do so they might tell you that you're wrong or you need to change something but sometimes all you need to do is just be like no I'm right like I believe this is the way to go and you need to just justify yourself and you know just go from there and like just be yeah just and you know you might change their minds because it's, it's so they might just not see it how you see it um yeah but Aside from that, I think just having good time management was probably the most important thing for me because when I first started out, even like the in first year, I was just working like all the time and I just, it was just not sustainable at all. Um, but then I realized from looking at other people in my course, like it didn't need to be like that. Like they would come into the studio, leave, and I would see on their Instagram story that they were out like partying, you know, I'd be like, I want to do that. Like, why can't I do that? Like I should be able to do that. So, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be working all the time. You can definitely manage, um, you know, the workload that you get um, like efficiently, but it just takes, you know, some practice. Yeah. Um, I agree with all the points that were said, especially the time management one, um, because I feel like it's very important uh, to kind of have a balance in order to succeed within this specific course. Um, I think beside that, um, one of the most important things is being a risk taker because uh, sometimes with projects, it can seem like crazy ideas, but eventually they kind of like narrow it down. You work with alongside the tutors, alongside your peers, and you narrow it down to basically having the, a strong concept, but your design um, can be technically um, successful. And um, I feel like one other aspect to have is being open to criticism because um, it may sound harsh, harsh, but the tutors are always right. They always have a point to say. And um, it, most of the time, it's gonna benefit your project 100% if you actually take the advice and you implement it in the best way possible. Because um, at the end of the day, the criticism is not really towards you as an individual or the work that you um, are doing. It's just very much subjective. Some people will like your stuff, some people won't. Um, and so take it with like a grain of salt and implement it in the best way possible. So that's why you have to be open-minded as well um, in that aspect, because um, the project is only going to develop. And even when you submit your project, it's never going to be 100% complete. Um, you'll always have something else to change, something else to add. Uh, but you do have to give yourself a lot of credit because technically you're doing a project from start to finish and you're just one architecture student whereas in the real world it takes a big like group of people um to kind of just even finish one project um but yeah you just have to be open-minded and have great time management thanks guys um so we can move on to some more career questions now 
Um, and this is just sort of like your future plans. Of course, nothing is set in stone yet, I'm sure, um, but just kind of what you're hoping to do. So if you guys have a plan for a job that you would like to pursue after university or any sort of plan, um, if you'd like to share that. Uh, so, so I'm currently a part one, so I'm doing my bachelor's and definitely looking to do my part two to get my master's so that's part of my plan but also at the same time I'm like I'd still love to get into architecture but being on placement and just being exposed to all the other people we work with I've kind of found that I do really enjoy kind of like making diagrams doing little illustrations and so I am also kind of interested in looking at possibly being like an illustrator for like architecture firms. So you kind of like a freelance kind of illustrator, people send you stuff and you kind of make the graphics. So you do a lot of kind of stage zero to two stuff. It's very sketch based and it's quite a lot of the things I do in my spare time. So being able to possibly do that integrated with my architecture would be quite something that I would really enjoy. So yeah, those are just the things I've been thinking about too, yeah. Um, yeah. The moment i'm thinking of just going all the way so yeah i'm also currently at part one but i'm thinking of just going all the way to getting you know qualified like licensed uh in the uk uh just at the moment but i'm definitely also keeping my options open because you know architecture is such a broad degree you can basically branch out into anything you want design related afterwards so like interior design even game design or like um urban planning um, so that, yeah, that's why I think, you know, being exposed to life and practice is really important because it definitely, you know, you're with people who did branch out into other fields, um, in the same office as you. So you get to basically, you get, you get to see, you know, what everyone does, um, which is, yeah, just why I think maybe doing an internship or just a placement, uh, is super important to, you know, deciding whether you even want to do architecture or not. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm thinking of, you know. Yeah, at the moment, getting qualified. Um, I agree with uh, Irene and Arnav, uh, but for me, now that I'm a part one architecture graduate, um, I'd like to work for a year or two, um, get as much experience as I can from the industry, um, and just develop the skills that I already have, and even learn from companies and like other um, people who can actually help me succeed within this field uh, because you always have to be uh, open to learning new aspects um, within this course um, and then eventually delving into the part two uh, which is the masters and um, I feel like I can I can say that I can actually delve into masters right now uh, but I would like to get experience on like technical stuff and um, just learning as much as I can within the next year or so uh, from a company and uh, then proceeding to actually start with part two. Um, one thing I would say is also similar to Arnav, you can delve into various different things basically when with this course. Um, and so I'm kind of looking into real estate as well, um, just to kind of set my foot into um, different aspects as well. Um, I feel like it's important to kind of have an open mind uh, with these kind of life approaches um, because I don't feel like because we have this architecture degree, uh, it's gonna be much easier to, you know, um, set foot into other like related stuff such as like real estate and whatnot because we already have that grasp onto like architecture and like how things like that work. Um, but yeah. Next step is working and part two. Thanks guys. Um, so did you have these sort of plans before you started school or would you say that these plans developed as you went through your degree? Um, and kind of advice, I guess, for students who were worried about not having a set plan before they start university, do you think it's possible to develop that plan as you go? Mm. Yeah, so I don't think I really had much of a plan. <laughs> um, that's why I think that's why I chose to do the International Baccalaureate, just because when you do the IB, you get to do six subjects. So you're doing quite a broad range of subjects. And that really helped me because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I would 
by the end of it, I'd be able to know what kind of things I'd lean more into. So like I did geography, I did physics, maths, I did art, English, literature, and Swahili B, which is the language you speak back home. So that was really quite helpful for me because I didn't want to, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet. So being able to have the options to just take a lot, just a big range of classes allowed me to kind of decide what I would want to do in the future. So it was something that kind of was a gradual thing, but there are definitely people who stayed in the A-level school that I was in before. And that was just cause they already had a plan of maybe I wanted to be an engineer, I wanted to be a doctor. So they had very set subjects that they could pick. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely didn't have a plan uh back in high school or much of a plan now i think but uh i also think that's like you know it's okay it's just it's just part of the process um it's also a big reason why i chose architecture because it opens the door for so many things uh, that you can go to afterwards if you don't want to specifically become an architect um yeah i mean I, a lot of, you know, my peers in university, they've already decided that they, that they don't want to be, you know, architects at all. Um, but that's fine because, you know, you have this, like, you have such a good foundation and you honestly learn like so much about life, like just life in general by doing architecture. Like, I feel like you just see, you just, like, you just see life different. Like whenever you, you just look at buildings and stuff, you just see it different than before. I mean, just, you have just this, so much knowledge, uh, I think, by studying architecture that it's just, it's okay not to have a plan. Yeah, I feel like 100%, it's it's totally normal not to have a plan. Um, I feel like um, as you grow up and um, as you basically start your university experience, that's when you'll start having like a proper kind of idea of where you kind of want to go in life. Although, as I now said, like many people change um, their thoughts on the whole course in general as well. Um, I know some people who decided it's not for them within like the first month of university. And um, I think in a way that's kind of the beauty of it. You're gonna have to learn and experience things in order to know if they're gonna work for you or not. Um, so it just depends from one person to another. Um, I agree with Irene though, because I was in exactly the same position as her. Um, I basically did the international baccalaureate and I was like, I have to kind of choose uh, like a, a variety of subjects that can help me in the future. Um, is even if that means I was not gonna choose architecture. Um, but I think it kind of gave me like a grasp onto um, the most important skills that I actually have now. Um, and I think um, regardless, I feel like um, if one piece of advice, advice I would give for students is to kind of focus in school and developing the skills that they already have or the skills that they would like to kind of have in the future. Um, so for instance, we had to choose, um, as Irene said, like English language and literature and things like such. Um, and so I feel like by having that strong like English basis, um, it kind of helped a lot tremendously in university, um, especially with like critical thinking, critical writing, um, even with your dissertation um, in your final year, because it's basically very much research based and you're gonna have to have like, uh, like a, as, kind of like a critical way of thinking that would help you develop um, a thesis that is strong and you, you're gonna have to basically find a way to make and give your point across. And so I feel like if there's anything that as a student um, you should focus on, you should probably focus on um, aspects like such. So developing your language, ensuring like uh, you can write essays, um, developing the skills that you need and just honestly doing whatever you like. Um, I think that's the best advice I'd give. Thank you. Um, all right, so I just noticed we have a question in the Q&A and since we have about 10 minutes left, I figured we could answer it quickly. Um, so the student asked, do you have to be good at math to be an architecture student? So I'll just pass that to you guys and all three of you can, can give your input on that one. Um, I think, Oof, uh, <laughs> math is quite useful um, 
during your architecture degree, but it's kind of dependent on the university that you go to. For example, like um, Arnav was talking about how we had structures and that was very physics and math based. So, but that's because we're doing a Bachelor of Science in architecture. So that's, it's like, those are the kind of things that you expect in the course and they're going to be integrated into the course in that way. Or like how I said in building environment, I found the calculations part a bit difficult. So math, doing math, like even though I did like standard level math, it was quite helpful being able to carry that knowledge forward into my modules. And it kind of helped me understand a bit more than I would have if I hadn't done them. So I think it does depend on what course you're in. Because I know one of my friends, she goes to the University of Sheffield, but hers, it's a more kind of, although it is engineering type based, she's doing it architecture and interior design. So hers is more art based. So they don't do a lot of kind of maths -y modules. It's more of like design, a lot more design projects. So it does depend on the kind of art, architecture university you're looking to go to. So yeah, but being good at math is quite helpful. But not, it's not essential at every university. Yeah. No, yeah, I think it's a, it'll be good to help you at definitely at first, I, I definitely at Bath, it was definitely more maths based at first, like in first year. But I, as you go on, it does get less and less math based. It, you don't, it's more, it gets more like actual architecture theory based rather than just, you know, doing maths all the time. But yeah, it, it'll, it'll definitely help you starting out at, at, at like a science, Bachelor of Science University for architecture. But no, yeah, not, not essential, I think. Yeah, I agree with both of you guys. Um, it's not essential, um, but I feel like it's very important at the same time to kind of have the knowledge and um, the skills to kind of just undertake like a few maths problems. And because I feel like some problems, like eventually you will be like, mm, does this work? Does this not work? And you'd have to kind of use maths in order to um, resolve those kind of issues. Um, I feel like, as Irene said, though, um, I did math standard level as well, um, but I believe like we didn't really use much maths throughout our um, degree, but whenever we did have to use it, because for instance, like sometimes we'd have to calculate the U value of things and um, matters like such. And I feel like that's when it came in handy, basically. Um, but you can definitely have, you know, kind of like a basic knowledge of math and um, continue just to develop it if you need to depending on the university that you obviously go to, but it's not essential, but it will be good. All right, thanks guys. Um, so we are getting towards the end of the time, but we still have a little bit more time left. Um, so I figured a good question to sort of end on a little bit um, would be if you could go back in time, what is one piece of advice you would give to your high school self? Basically knowing what you know now, what do you wish you would have known back then? Um, I think maybe just take more risks with the kind of art that I did. Like, so as I said, I did visual arts and you get to pick. It's like you're structuring your own projects, basically. So you get to pick the brief. You get to pick what art pieces that you do, what fits together, what mediums you're doing them in. So it's quite, it's quite more free than doing A-level art courses where you have like an exam. So this is more about like just what what do you feel is important that you want to represent in your art and I think if I had taken more risk with that it would have really helped me because in final year you do a project where you're the one who sets the brief you're the one who designs the building you pick the location so I think I would have definitely just taken more time to explore more options kind of have more fun with it um, but so I, I did enjoy what I did but I think I could have gone a lot further if I just um, yeah just took more risk so yeah No, yeah, I agree. I think I would, yeah, just, yeah, I, I don't really know how I could say it any differently, just taking more risks. I was definitely so caught up on, like, the practicality of my projects, like, how the building worked and how it functioned and what the plan was, and I didn't really pay attention to what, um, like, the artistic side of architecture which is like and like the culturally um expressive side that you can definitely integrate into your projects which is like so important 
So I think I would just tell myself to like, yeah, not, you know, become less of a, less of a functionalist about everything and just think, and you just have fun with it. Um, and just like enjoy what I'm actually designing and like stop like overthinking everything. But yeah. I feel like, yeah, I'm the same. Um, but I feel like with my uh, visual arts subject in school, I wish I kind of did more uh, things related to architecture. Um, I remember one of my last big projects uh, for that subject was um, designing a three dimensional uh, replica of the Taj Mahal. And um, I feel like that kind of was the thing that excited me for university. And um, that's when I realized I am excited to go into architecture and um, learn all of these kind of uh, skills. Um, and so I kind of wish I started doing architecture related art pieces earlier. Um, but at the same time, I feel like we get so caught up stressing and getting so anxious about um, the results of things and if whether or not like things are gonna work out that we kind of forget to enjoy the school experience. And um, I feel like uh, if there's anything uh, like a student should do is kind of enjoy um, these kind of years, although they're going to be very like stressful and very hard. Um, but I feel like that's literally the beauty of it, like I said before, um, because at the end of the day, it ends up working out. Um, I know so many people who didn't even know what they were going to do in high school. And now, like, everything's all good with them. Um, so I think just be passionate about whatever you're doing in school. And um, don't be afraid of trying new things. Don't be afraid of taking the risk, as Irene said, um, because honestly, sometimes you regret not taking the risk, um, especially when it comes to your potential, like when it comes to doing um, things that are art-based. Uh, but yeah, that's mainly it. Thank you, guys. Um, so we have three more minutes. I think we have time for one more. Um, so for this one, we'll do, what is one application tip you would give to someone who wants to apply to an architecture degree? So for a high school student who's planning on applying, just one um, quick tip uh, that you would give them. Um, I guess just be honest <laughs> um, about your inspirations, your aspirations about things. Like, a lot of people I remember reading their applications they talked about like a lot of like books they read or some things like that and I hadn't done that and I felt kind of pressured to say oh yeah I've been reading architecture books I've been doing this this and that but it's not about that when you're reading your like personal statement it's about why you have your own unique kind of flair like things that make you interested in what you do so I feel like don't feel like you have to do what other people are doing and just stick to yourself and that will be enough yeah so um for for bath i don't i don't think there was a requirement for like a portfolio or anything but i know a lot or most of the architecture schools do want a portfolio with your like personal statement um and stuff like that so i i kind of underestimated how important that was when applying and i got rejected for pretty much every university that required a portfolio because i just didn't have didn't have a very good one so i think i would just maybe spend some time like you know, just doing some sketching, just observational drawings, you know, stuff you're interested in. I mean, any like, you know, even just like drawing existing buildings that you really like and just like writing about them, I think goes a long way for, you know, universities that want to see a portfolio. Um, yeah, so just showing your interest from like an artistic point of view. Yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like, um, one of the most important aspects that we kind of weren't really introduced to was that idea of having a portfolio. Um, I feel like because I was very much into art, like my whole like teenage life, um, it was very easy for me to kind of just gather everything and create like a portfolio of things. Um, but I know some people like, for example, like Arnab who weren't able to do that. And so I feel like uh, if you'd like to delve into architecture, that's one of the most important things to have, just have, everything that you do be put in a portfolio that you can basically use to apply for universities. Um, also, the second advice I'd give is um, 
not thinking too much about your personal statement and just being honest like Irene said you have to be very uh, honest and like open and you just have to basically showcase and highlight why exactly you would like to get into the architecture field um because at the end of the day it's a matter of showing who you are in written form and um, it's just very important to write it in a way that helps them best like depict and illustrate yourself and who you would like them to see um uh, yeah that's basically the only advice i'd give Thank you guys. Um, so we're coming to the end of our time today, but thank you so much to our panelists um, for giving up your time and being here today. I think um, we had a wonderful insight to architecture degrees in general and all of the advice you guys gave was amazing. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you to the students who took time uh, to come watch. I'm sure we all agree. The panelists did a great job. Um, and if you need to rewatch it for any reason, the recording will be on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can watch there and to contact the panelists, their LinkedIn is in the um, chat, so don't worry. Um, and once again, for the students, if you need any help with university or career guidance, take a look at our website or our Instagram. We have tons of information there, um, and you can also reach out to any one of us on LinkedIn. Um, and with that said, thank you so much to our panelists, um, and I hope everyone has a great day. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye-bye.